This video is about quarter sewing lumber. The old way, which is very inefficient, and the new way that's more adapted to modern sawmills. Stay with me as we go through the different ways of quarter sewing lumber. But we need to talk about the efficiency of operating a sawmill. And what we're going to talk about is the traditional way of quarter sawing lumber. Then I'm going to introduce you to a better way that is much more efficient on a modern bandsaw mill to cut quarter sawing lumber. Why do we need to do this? Well, much of the 18th century, when quarter sawing lumber, this old traditional way come about, is most of the people that worked at sawmills were making about $2 a day. That wage didn't nearly change for nearly 100 years. In 1930, though, they started making $2 an hour. And now our president wants to pay everybody a minimum wage of $15 an hour. All of this means that for us to stay in business as sawmill operators, we must either raise the price for lumber or become much more efficient as operators of the sawmills. So what I'm going to show you first is the old traditional way of quarter sawing lumber. And then I'm going to show you a modern way to cut it with a modern bandsaw mill that will save you a lot of labor. I think this should help you out in becoming more efficient as a sawmill operator. I first tried to uh, demonstrate this uh, with these smaller logs. What I'm going to show you is different ways to quarter saw a log. Uh, we're going to do it inside here just because I can take these end logs and, and move along much faster than I can on a sawmill. But it'd be the same principle when you're at your sawmill. I tried to demonstrate with this 15 inch log and soon realized something. Is that's too small a log to try to quarter saw. When you start quarter sawing, all you get is just a little bit of wood out of the thing on a small log. So brings up the effect again about production and how fast, you know, to control your cost, you need to be as efficient as possible. And what that means is you need to produce so many board feet an hour of, if you're doing quarter saw and quarter saw and lumber. When you're using a small log, you're doing a lot of work, the same work you really would do on this big piece of wood but you're getting very little results because the wood pieces are just so small that you're getting out of it after all that work. Uh, now, if you have a small sawmill and no ability to move logs around, you're kind of stuck with doing small logs. But if you have the equipment and a sawmill sufficient size to do it, you need to use this one, the, the biggest log you've got available for quarter sawing. Second is, as you can see, by this big oak log here, the log is not exactly round. Therefore, if you can, choose a log that's round as possible and you'll get more production out of it. I'm still going to use this to illustrate what we're doing, but I think you'll get the idea. Typical quarter sawing that is old school that teaches you to quarter saw is to cut the log in four quarters. That's where it gets its name. Uh, in this case, we have a, a problem with the log in the middle. So normally I would try to look around and find out where I could get the most quarter saw and lumber out of the log. Like that's a really good place and maybe here. But here we've got an issue that if we do, we're going to end up with a crack on our board. So why don't we just cut it down the crack? One, we always want to key off the pith here. So uh, typical quarter sawing. You would lay the log up and cut it in half right across the pith. Then you would go 90 degrees to that. And cut it again across the pith. So that uh, you end up with four quarters. 
if we do that, and the reason you do that is you're trying to figure out where the quarter sawn lumber. Uh, quarter sawn lumber is always cut where it comes the grain, but you want the grain going crossways on it, like this is. In other words, if I illustrate this grain flow and follow some of these uh, growth rings, we would see that this log, that's the growth rings on it. And if we go over here, and this is where you, a round log makes more sense, other than you can get more quarter sawn out of this log because of that dip, but I'm following the grain with the pen. And then you come over here and you've got a little bit of wavy grain, but it's basically good. And over here, you got the same thing. This seem, may seem a little tedious, but there's a point to it, okay? Uh, typically, quarter sawn lumber is just taking it where, where the grain is crossways. In other words, here, here we're, we're getting less than 45 degrees. So anything past that is not quarter sawn. Anything on this side of that line would probably be classified as quarter sawn. Now, if I get over here, I could probably use that. So we always want to eliminate that pith because it's going to cause problems with your log. So that's your good usable lumber. Uh, some people before they quarter saw the log will go through and trim the log, square it up, get rid of the white wood. And that just you're going to have to get rid of it at some point, either to start with or at the last. You, you choose, but that's just the way some people do. Um, if we quarter saw this log, let me take a second to do that. And then we're going to play a little with those quarters. Now that's the same way you would do with your sawmill when the log is laying up. Keep in mind what I'm talking about is cutting this right across there like I just did, and then we're gonna roll the log and cut it again with our sawmill. I'm just doing it on a saw, but I wanna keep the orientation where you can understand what we're doing. So one of the problems is the distance between that cut and the top of your log, in this case here, <clears throat> Some of the sawmills will only do about nine inch clearance between the blade and the top of their blade guards. So you couldn't use this kind of big a log for that, which goes back again why it's kind of good to square it up first, get rid of that wood that allow you to get more. So you may have to use slightly smaller log depending on your sawmill. But this is probably pretty excessive for most sawmills right there. But we got the, the log sawed in half. So our next step on a regular sawmill, doing it the old fashioned way. Would be to saw the halves into quarters. Now for efficiency, let me give you a, a little shop trick. You can either take the halves and try to stand them up, which is kind of an issue, but that's the way it's normally done. Or on each end of the log, put your big cargo strap around these things to hold them together and roll them all at one time. Take the cargo strap off one end, come down halfway along the log, put it back on, take the other end off, and you can cut both of them at one time, yet they're standing up easy. That's just a shop trick. You don't have to do it that way. That's just one of the ways. So let's quarter saw these. 
these pieces. So now we need to set these aside. And quarter saw our other piece. The old-fashioned way of quarter sewing was to now take this thing and stand it up on your sawmill. If you're using a blade mill, you would take a cut down here. If you're using a bandsaw mill, you always cut from the bottom up to get your squared up wood. and. Uh, to illustrate that a little better, if we're bandsaw milling, we're trying to get quarter sawn lumber, in other words, lumber that's crank So with the bandsaw mill, we would take a board off like this, and then all that wood in here would be quarter sawn. The next cut on a bandsaw mill, you would roll the log, and then take a cut off of it here and this would be your quarter sawn lumber. And then you would roll the log back if you're using a bandsaw mill doing it the old way and you would cut another board here and here's our quarter sawn lumber. And then we would roll this log and do it again. Do y'all see where we're going here? We are spending a huge amount of time rolling this log to reconfigure each cut. But that's the old school way of quarter sawing. Some people have come up with better ways and, uh, and I've come up with one I think is even more efficient. So I'm gonna illustrate some of them. So if you have a uh, blade mill, basically you would do the same operation only your blade would be running vertical I'm sorry, you would make that cut first with a, a old blade mill, cut that, then roll it and cut it, roll it and cut it the same you'd have to do on a bandsaw. So with all of that rolling and cutting, you end up with uh, supposedly, carry this on out here, we're going to roll it and cut it, 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 and usually you'd throw that away on the thing. So that's waste wood. But that's traditional quarter sewing of lumber. And uh, it gets some boards, but what you'll notice is, get a different color pin here. We're not truly quarter sewing. Here's, here's our grain. Let me draw the grain, it'll be easier. And what you see is, that's not really a very good quarter sawn right here. Now it is down here, but that's hard to see that grain there. We got good quarter saw in the first couple of cuts and then it starts leaning over and our grain is kind of running at an angle. So supposedly the definition of quarter saw is anything less than 45 degrees of quarter saw, but it's a poor quality quarter saw. This is your better quality where it goes straight across. So, a lot of flipping and turning, a lot of flipping and turning, 
waste wood. You're going to have waste wood with quarter sawn any way you go at it. So another way to, because you're flipping and turning, flipping and turning, one of the other things you might want to consider using the old way of cutting is Using the older way of cutting, one of the things to increase efficiency you can do here. And that is cut this one all the way across, put them together, flip them both, put them back together. You have to take this into the other side and cut the second cut. But by laying two logs, if your sawmill will handle it on there, you get more efficient cuts with all this flip and turning. Now the problem is you're flipping two logs every time, not just one. So that's a debatable process on the thing. So anyway, if you want to try that method, do it. Notice that, that just, that's the old traditional way of doing it. I think they thought labor was cheaper back when that was invented. And we know that all this turning and turning take, eats up a lot of hourly labor cost doing that and reposition that log. So we got to come up with a way to spend less labor, less time producing this quarter sawn lumber. So let's look at some other ways of doing it. Uh, because this is a little better than three inches thick post oak we're working with, it is heavy. <laughs> okay, here's an alternative for you. If we know that the pith of a log is always a problem for our lumber, so we're going to key steel with quarter saw and you're going to key everything off of it. So if I was going to truly quarter saw, I would lay this like that and quarter saw it. But what if you do this? What if you go around here and Mark your wood. I'm going to just so that we can keep up with this. I'm doing the growth rings. There's our growth ring, and we know we want to go perpendicular to them in our cuts to get quarter sawn lumber. Why don't we do this? Why don't, why don't you lay one we got a, I'm going to key off this crack just to get rid of it. But what if I go out here on the end of my ruler and look to where the growth rings start to fall off, start to fall off below 45 degrees and I'm looking in and about right there. If I go to this other end and start looking, it's a very similar style. So if that's where we quit getting good quarter sawn lumber out of our log, why don't we just cut it there? Because we only want quarter sawn lumber. But let's go over here on the other side and play the same game. I want to look to where it falls off in this side, it's much greater. Man, I can I can come out that far on that side. Let's see what the other does. Um, yeah, this this thing. Now I want these two lines parallel, more or less. So, but. See, all of that stuff in that area is quarter sawn. So that's good. Now, that's not the only quarter sawn lumber we have in our log. We have quarter sawn lumber here. So if I go, using the pith as a guide, and I want to go quarter sawn off of that, 
I start looking over here to where we start losing our quarter song because that's flat. Actually, it's about right there on that side. And well, we're going to lose a little on this side. So what we need to do is if, I'm just going to cut that there. Green lines are what we're going to cut with our uh, sawmill or blade mill. Okay, here we're going to look to where it falls off. And boy, it goes way over here on this side. Are we going to be that lucky on the other side? Nope, it falls off about right there. So, I can do two things. One, I can try to average those two lines. But since they're going to be cut loose anyway, we don't necessarily have to. I can take and draw me a cut line there. And I can draw me a cut line over here. And they're not matched up, but that doesn't matter. Let me show you why. We're kind of playing a trick here. If I take this log now, and one thing we got to remember about this log is you want to look in here in the middle, and you want to see different logs have different uh, pith widths. In this one, I'm looking, and it looks like it's about right there. Why that's important? If we take this piece and mark a line right there and right there, and if we cut the pith out, we still got a quarter saw. Now, one thing we're going to need to do up here is we're going to need to get rid of our bark, white wood. So we're going to end up doing a cut there. We're going to end up doing a cut here just to get rid of white wood. Okay, all this layout may not make a lot of sense, but, but think of this. If we take our log, if we take our log, and we got the pith, and, th and this green line is coming on the top of the pith, this green line is coming under the pith, what we do is we capture the pith in one piece, and then this and this is what's below that cut but there's still salvageable wood by this way. Also, we're getting rid of all that countless flip, 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 flip that we're doing with traditional quarter sawing. I want you to see how quick, simple this is to get you some good quarter sawn lumber out of uh, using this method. This one aside, and in a minute we'll cut it off. All right, let's get our quarter sawn lumber out of here. Again, this is the off cut, and we'll get some quarter sawn out of that in a minute. Now, one, we want to get rid of our old bark. So this cut gets rid of our bark. 
Keep in mind, we, we just reorientated this. This is gonna be standing up like this on our sawmill and we're running our sawmill down a whole log. We're gonna run the sawmill down a whole log cut here, here, and here. You might want to flip it at this point so that you can get a better cut here if it won't hold. But for right now, we're good. All right. There's our good quarter song. That throw away, it's just a pith. And I can either flip this or try to cut it, bounce it on that edge, but the, what I'm doing is getting rid of white wood. Got rid of our white wood. At this point, we have two quarter sawn pieces. We get an orientation here. That sides match to the pith, but the pith's gone. So what I would do at this point, if you wanted to, one, your quarter sawn lumber, remember you want it running, you want it running vertical. Ah, we got it right here. Toward the pith. So, what you would probably do is lay the pith to one side and you can start cutting anywhere. And let's say we're cutting one bias. We would just start cutting and every one of them, the piece that we cut off that would have quarter sawn with the grain wood. You see, we not, not, we've got rid of all this flipping around mess. Okay, make it more efficient. Do them at the same time. Get two of them on there. You, remember, you don't have to flip them. You got them clamped, then you just cut, 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 and you're through. And all of it's quarter sawn that's out of these center sections of your log. So, that's simple enough. We would just take, if we were to put them together, I don't think I can hold them. So I'm just going to illustrate one. So I would, on the sawmill, I would pass it down. And you can see our flick rays, but here you can definitely see the quarter sawn part of the board. Once that fills us a second, we're going to save that other quarter sawn lumber. So, I'm going to cut it here. Set this aside for a moment. Cut this one. quarter sawn lumber. Now, as we've done that, we still want to cut our white wood off of this. Get rid of our trash wood that isn't quarter sawn lumber. That's just trash. And we've got grain is going across on the thing. I would want that to be a crossways on my piece, so I'd want to cut down this way so that I'm bisecting those lines. So you would cut it this way and quarter saw that off. And if you look at those ring, growth ring lines, it is... So we would want to cut down, lay it on its edge, in our bandsaw mill, we would cut through this way, perpendicular to those lines, and we would get quarter sawn lumber out of it. Okay. 
Yep. We done this. Two of our side pieces are uh, cut now, but we want to get rid of our white wood on the edge. Now, we can set like this and just run our sawmill down to where through and air all of our lumber will be quarter sawn. And these are the two side pieces, not the central pieces that we start to start off with. So, out of this log, here's our two side pieces. Uh, and we've got our pith, our uh, quarter song pieces out of it. So we've got that much. Sorry, that goes like that. Whew. Excuse me, I'm working up sweat handling this big log. So that's the quarter song lumber we have gotten out of this base 29 inch round log but that's a pretty significant amount and remember when you shrink it down just imagine that you're only getting this much if I make this a 15 inch log and you see the issue real quick why big logs make more quarter sawn bigger log more efficient you are cutting this thing but we've been real efficient because how many cuts have we made we made just to get to the quarter sawn, we only made this cut and this one. And then we took these two, which could be cut at the same time, but since they're different widths, we'll probably cut them separate. So that's two, three, four, five, six cuts, seven, eight, as we took the pith out. In eight cuts, we've got these logs that, say you're using a 10 foot log, this thing is 10 foot of really nice quarter sawn lumber. It's and so you're going to start cutting it, of course roll it, cut it off, and you'll have quarter sawn lumber for 10 feet. So <clears throat> that's one aspect of it. Now, think of this. Uh, these are the corners that I cut off of here. Actually, you do have some quarter sawn lumber in those, if you want to take advantage of it. But you got a problem. One, here's our growth rings. So quarter sawn lumber would be basically that lumber right there. But you have to, to do that. You'd have to cut this off and cut that off and then cut this off. And yes, you would end up with a little quarter sawn lumber. Again, we're dealing with a 29 inch log. If I deal with a 15 inch log, it's that big by that big. It ain't worth the trouble. If you're doing big logs, it might be worth your time to set this up somehow and cut this off and flip it and cut that off and then some other jig to hold it in this position and cut that and then you could flip it and cut that piece. And you would have some more quarter sawn lumber that's a lot of flipping and turning, and it'd be up to you where you want to go to that trouble. A lot of people just throw these pieces away. There, remember, there's four of them that come off each corner. So you can try to do that if you want to, but it's not really worth the trouble on small logs. I was trying to make the point about how much less efficient small logs were for quarter sawing, and I thought this example might be useful. This was cut out of a 29 inch log and you see this piece we got here. This was cut out of a 15 inch log. So,
15 inch log, 29 inch log, that's how much quarter sawing you get out of the thing. You see how the efficiency increases a lot by going to bigger logs. So save your small logs for lumber, use your bigger logs for quarter sawing if that's what you're trying to do because the production is there on the big logs but not on the lilies. 15 inch log, ain't gonna cut it. So I hope that gives you a, a lesson on how to do quarter sawing lumber. It'd be a lot neater on your sawmill than me trying to hand do it in here, but it's still, it's the same principle. I just can do it faster in here for this purpose of this video. So here's some great post oak lumber that is quarter sawn. Would make really good tabletops. Remember, one of the big advantages of tabletops is it doesn't, I mean, a quarter sawn is it doesn't warp. When you're gluing all this together for a big wide tabletop, you do not want those joints warping. So that's where you usually use quarter sawn lumber. Something that you want very stable. So hopefully this was helpful. We'll see you on the next video. If you like this video, please hit the uh, like button down at the bottom. Let us, let us know what you think of our demonstration here and all the trouble we went to to explain this. Uh, also subscribe so that you'll get notifications about the uh, upcoming videos. We got a whole bunch more of them coming where we're trying to explain some of this stuff. Hope it's useful. Be sure and give me your comments down there if you got any helpful information. This uh, video and other ones sometime are controversial because there's more than one way to do a lot of woodworking projects. So give me your view on it. Till next time, see you later.